Hello everyone, I'm Sam, uh, and this is a talk about freelancing, hooray! Uh, first about me, I'm a developer, uh, I've been working for about 12 years in the web development hosting space, and for the last seven of those I have been freelancing. Uh, I started programming way back in 98 uh, with a really bad basic program, um, built, building websites since 2002-ish. Uh, 2011, I decided to quit my job and go to Europe, and I started freelancing then. Uh, came back and kind of went, how long can I keep this going? And it's been going and going and going. Uh, Incorporated 2015, still going on. Uh, this was my very first office when I was freelancing. It was a 1982 camper van. Uh, I bought it in Germany. We drove around and found any kind of campground with Wi-Fi. Uh, we stopped there, plugged the van in. Um, as you can see, I had a chair which span around and I could sit on the laptop and get a bit of work done. Uh, living expenses were minimal so I didn't actually need to do that much. I would work in the mornings then we would take our bikes and explore whatever town we happened to be in that day. Uh, this is my office now. I have kind of upgraded a bit. <laughs> um, I work from home. I am doing very close to full-time hours all of the time for various clients, uh, running my own company and very happily doing it. I don't want a real job. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, let's talk about freelancing. Who here has freelanced? Uh, who has thought about doing it but hasn't made the jump yet? And who has hired a freelancer, whether you've had a good experience or a bad experience? A uh, few people. Alrighty. So, truth one. Freelancers are cheaper than employees. Uh, employees, I don't know if you've ever hired anyone, but they cost about two to three times their nominal salary. So if you're getting paid 40000 a year, you're probably costing the company about 120000 uh, that comes from extra costs that you don't think about, superannuation, extra accounting fees, subscriptions, equipment. You've also got to have a desk and somewhere to put the desk and electricity to go to the desk and internet for the desk. Employees cost a lot of money. Uh, if you're not needing an employee all the time, consider getting a freelancer instead. Uh, employees will keep costing you money even when they're not making you money. Uh, if they're on sick leave or annual leave or just playing on Facebook for the day or they've gone out to the pub and they hope you won't notice, you're still paying them. Um, and they aren't feasible if you only need a small amount of work. Need a couple of pages added to your website or maybe a custom plugin, you probably aren't going to hire a full-time employee. Uh, freelancers, on the other hand, we cost as much as we cost. Uh, our rates may seem high, but once the work's done, you stop paying us. If we bugger off down the pub, you stop paying us. Uh, and we're available for small jobs. So if it's only a little bit of work, uh, freelance is probably a great way to go. And even if you are hiring multiple developers and you just need someone else to fill the gap on a big project. Freelancers are available on demand. So a couple of tips. Businesses, use freelancers to add capacity. If you cannot do something, get a freelancer. If you don't know how to design something, hire a designer. If you don't know how to build something, hire a developer. If you're not sure how to market properly, hire a marketer. Uh, we're there to add value to your business. Uh, and when you consider the cost of hiring a full-time employee, unless you are hiring a freelancer full-time, they will probably be cheaper. Um, for freelancers, when you're starting, your rate should be about two to three times what your hourly would be if you were uh, on a salary. 
Uh, and there's a few reasons for that. One, you can't bill full-time hours. I know I can't. Uh, if you're working in a week, some weeks you'll be working maybe, well, you, even if you're working 20, oh, sorry, full-time hours, 40 hours in a week, you might only be able to bill 10, 20, or 30 of those, depending on the stuff. Uh, all the rest is still work, but it's not work that's billable. It'll be ramping up projects or closing things down or doing stuff for your own business and you can't charge anyone for that. So you have to bill a rate for the hours that you can that will cover the hours where you can't. Uh, try to bill yourself enough to pay a salary, including superannuation. I did this when I made the transition over to, the uh, to running as a company and it has been the best thing I have ever done. Uh, Any time I went to get a rental, they would go, well, how do we know how much money you earn? And I would have to get a nice letter from my accountant to say, he earns this much. Uh, when I started looking at house loans, all of the banks would say, how much money do you earn? I don't believe you if you just tell me. By paying myself a salary, there is consistency. Every single fortnight, I'm getting the same amount. I'm able to pay tax. I can estimate my tax. The first couple of years when I started freelancing and I didn't pay myself a salary, tax was a schmozzle. First year I owed $10,000 to the tax office because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Um, and it, it was less the second year, I think it was only about $2,000. But once I've moved to paying this salary, I'm actually running as a company, I'm technically an employee of my company now and I'm actually getting tax back, it's great. Uh, and it's consistent and banks love it and everyone else who wants to check, you, <laughs> check your income, they love it too. Uh, and superannuation as well, I can't, I, if, if I wasn't paying myself superannuation, I would probably have to keep working until I was uh, far too old and adult to know what a WordPress was. Uh, truth number two. A task that will take six hours will cost you the entire day. Uh, if I have a four hour task, I could probably fit another three hour task in. Uh, if I have a six hour task, then I've got two hours where I can't bill and it's not enough time to start up on something else. Uh, I find six hours is about the magic number where you have wasted the entire day by doing just one task. Um, luckily there is a solution for this and that is charge a day rate. Uh, this kind of, it, it's, it's a hard thing to get your head around but if you charge for the entire day rather than the hours you spend in the day, uh, especially for a large project, um, you get a lot more freedom to kind of spread out your time and do a much better job. Uh, for people who are hiring a freelancer on a day rate, it's uh, pretty useful for you as well. If you have a couple of those little tasks that might take 15 minutes or half an hour and you've been putting off getting them done, well, I've got six hours of task and I've, you've paid for the whole day, so chuck me a couple of little things that you've been putting off for ages. I can get it done. Uh, the other benefit is... If the task that was meant to take six hours for some reason blows out, you've paid for the day. It's not going to start costing you anymore. Um, and it means that as a freelancer, I'm not wasting two hours a day of time that I can't do anything with. Uh, next, uh, you are a business, not an employee. This is very hard for a lot of people, businesses and freelancers to get your head around. Uh, it's a lot easier when you come up to a plumber and that you, you see a plumber as a business, you see an electrician as a business, you see a mechanic as a business, but for whatever reason, freelancers, it's really difficult for people to see us as a business. Um, <clears throat> but that's exactly what you are. So if you wouldn't be comfortable telling your plumber, Oh, uh, I know you said it'll be $200, but I'll pay you 100 Then why are you comfortable doing that with a freelancer? If you, 
if you were a plumber, would you accept that? No, you just laugh and move on. <laughs> There's plenty of other plumbing work, plenty of other pipes. I don't need someone who doesn't value my time and doesn't treat me as a business because that's what you are. <laughs> Negotiation is fine, but you can't dictate a freelancer's terms. And as a freelancer, you shouldn't allow another business to dictate your terms. They can't say, tell you, this is what your rate will be. No, I'm a business. I set my rates. Uh, they can't say, you're also going to work at three in the morning and I don't care what you have to say about it. No, I'm a business. I'm not going to work at three in the morning unless I really want to or unless you're paying the extra for it. You are a business. Do not forget that ever. Uh, which leads into this. Unreasonable requests deserve unreasonable rates. Uh, if you, as a client, are bad at planning, expect to pay more every time you, got, you ask for an urgent change. It's one of, one of the things that it's uh, hard, hard to argue for as a freelancer, saying, hey, well, I, I didn't know about this thing, so it's going to cost you extra, but it's definitely worth it. Uh, freelancers, set your business hours. Uh, you are a business. You should have a set hours. Uh, a lot of people do nine to five. That seems pretty good. Um, I do nine to five for Tuesdays and I work uh, a little bit on Saturday morning. That's just me. Um, work outside those hours, I will charge an extra 20% for because that's me time. You're, you're taking my time away. Um, and the other part is implementing an emergency or priority rate. Uh, I've had this happen a lot of times and this does, a, this does a double whammy. If someone emails you and goes, it's urgent, it's urgent, I need you to put a picture up on my website. That's, that's not urgent, you, you can do that yourself. Oh no, no, but it's really urgent, I need you to do it right now. And when I tell them it'll cost 20% more, um, and personally, I have a two-hour minimum on any billing for emergency work. Uh, two-hour minimum billing. And then it's suddenly not that urgent. It, it, it could wait till tomorrow. <laughs> um, everyone's, every client's work is urgent to them. So they think it's urgent to you. Once again, this all feeds back to not being an employee and all of that type of stuff. But... When you say urgent, expect to pay a bit more because I have to put aside other work that I'm working on and then outside of hours, I've got to catch up on that work. So by charging an urgent rate, I'm compensating for myself for the outside business hours work that I now have to do just to fix your problem. Um, so if you're a business, try to plan ahead. If you know you're doing a big sale on Father's Day, don't tell me the day before Father's Day. Tell me a couple of weeks ahead. If you know changes are coming, please give us time to work on them. It will be cheaper for you and you can, much, you can get a much better uh, idea of what's going on. Um, and also feel happy that your tasks won't be dropped because the guy down the street has suddenly had an urgent case of the forgetfuls. Um, when you're working, or when I'm working for you, I'm working for you. If the guy down the street comes up to me and says, this is urgent, I need, you, I need you to jump on this straight away, unless they're paying a priority rate, which compensates me for getting your stuff done later, they're not getting it done until, I'm not dropping your task to get onto theirs. Um, so yeah, you, you can be happy that if you've hired me to do something, it will get done and it won't cost you extra to do that. Uh, it'll cost whoever's interrupted me to, <laughs> to uh, get that done. Uh, intermission, that's a lot of information. Um, here's my pets. <laughs> uh, over here we have my cat Schrodinger, who is named that because <laughs> I am a massive nerd. <laughs> uh, he's my constant companion in the office and normally climbs up on that shelf there and knocks shit off it. Just for the hell of it. 
Uh, in the middle, we have my pet hedgehog that I had when I lived in America for a while. Uh, she was called Spiny Norman because I am a massive nerd. Uh, that's a bit more obscure, but anyone who's really into Monty Python might get it. And up the top, we have my dog, Scotty, who is named that because my wife wouldn't let me name any more animals. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes on her, I take it as a Star Trek reference. <laughs> Alrighty, back to the talk. Truth number five, you have to make time for downtime. Downtime happens, you have to be prepared for it. And if it doesn't happen, your brain will fall out. Uh, burnout is a real thing. I've experienced it many times myself over my career. When you burn out, you might lose a couple of hours where you're not being productive. You might lose a couple of days where you're not being productive. The absolute worst one was I went for a month and a half and could only build for about 10 hours in that time because I was just plain unproductive. And when you are billing for hours, you need to be productive. But that means you need to take time off, take care of yourself. You are a business, but you're also a person. Uh, there will be times when there's no work. Uh, and there's going to be times when there's too much work. And you have to accept both of those things. If you stress too much when there's no work, you are going to burn out when there's too much work. And if you burn out when there's too much work, you'll end up with no work. So a couple of tips. Plan for a couple of weeks off each year and bill accordingly. I am planning in a month or so to take a month off. I'm going to drive down to Melbourne, go see a friend who I haven't seen for years. Take time off. You need to de-stress. You need to let your brain let go. Uh, make a schedule and stick to it. I am horrible at this. I'm the first to admit that I am horrible at this. Luckily, my wife is not. Um, if it was left to me, I would work for a couple of hours in the morning, then go play with the dog, and then go for a bike ride, and then go play some games, and then at about 10 p.m. go, oh crap, I've got to finish this work, and then at about 2 in the morning go to bed, and then wake up at 5 in the morning because I've got a client in America. And <laughs> Basically, I'd, I'd burn out if my wife wasn't kicking my ass about this. Um, Find a hobby that doesn't resemble work. I mountain bike. I also, from a couple of slides back, you can see my dog has this weird little harness. He is a border collie, but he doesn't know he's not a husky. I have a, I have a dry land sled, which is a nice big mountain bike scooter, and he tows me everywhere. Um, and he loves it. There's a sled dogging group that we've recently started going to, and he out crazies the Huskies. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I was very, I'm very happy about that. But find something that doesn't resemble work, whether it's playing games or going for a walk or a hike or playing with your dog or, you know, doing anything else that lets your brain let go. Because if you don't let go, it'll fall out. Uh, use slow periods to learn and do housekeeping. If you want to test out a brand new framework or want to test out a brand new plugin or a brand new theme for WordPress, do it when you're not getting paid. Learn it, spend some time. It doesn't matter if you break things, but you get to learn more by breaking everything <laughs> in the process. Uh, and housekeeping. I'm talking about literal housekeeping, mow the lawn or do something else as well as business housekeeping. Uh, go through and make sure you've reconciled all your accounts for the year. Check up on a couple of clients that have gone silent for a little bit. You know, a whole bunch of things that, things that you can do uh, in your downtime. And most importantly, relax. It's uh, not really worth costing all of your health over a business. You have to chill out sometimes. <coughs> Uh, truth six, you have to be honest, upfront, and candid. Um, I'm just going to read this out straight there. You can read it too. 
The worst time for a client to find out about a delay is after the due date. And the second worst time is the day before it's due. Uh, this one is one that a lot of people struggle with. They don't want to admit that something's not working. They don't want to admit that they're falling behind. They don't want to admit that they're not as professional as they thought they were. And so they don't tell anyone and hope it'll work out. The secret is it never does. Uh, if you don't want to be spending your days dodging client emails because you haven't finished the task that was finished three weeks ago, let them know as soon as it's starting to go south. Maybe you're spending all your time trying to get one particular plugin to work just right and if you ask them they'd say, I don't care about that plugin, I just want the shop to work or I, I, just, want, I just want this page to look good. You don't know what they want until you ask them and if you spend all of your time focusing on what you think they want rather than asking them what they actually want, you're going to end up in a bad situation where nobody's happy and once again you'll be stressed. Uh, truth number seven, hungry does not mean desperate. This is particularly for new freelancers. You will learn this lesson the hard way. Even after I tell you, you will learn it the hard way 5, 6, 18, 29, 30 times. Some contracts are trouble. Some projects are doomed. Absolutely doomed. There is nothing anyone can do to save them. Sometimes it's because the client's expectations are unreasonable. Uh, sometimes it's just a bad idea and sometimes they're doomed because you're not capable of doing it yourself. Uh, don't ignore the red flags on a project. They're there for a reason and the reason is to tell you to get the hell out of Dodge. If something feels off, seems off, move on. It's not that bad. You're not an employee once again. You are not an employee. You can choose not to do a project. Uh, and if you're feeling really hungry because you haven't had a project in a while, still don't pick up the bad project. A bad project is worse than no project. When you have no project, you can be looking for new work, you can be chasing new clients, you can be doing housekeeping, you can be riding your bike down a hill, you can be doing anything else. If you have a bad client, you will not get paid for the work you've done and you'll spend another 6, 10, 12 hours, maybe depending on the size of the project, you might ring your lawyer, you might try to go through small claims and none of that is billable time. And even if you get a judgment in your favour, there's no guarantee they will pay you. So, no client, always, without question, every single time, better than a bad client. So, truth number eight, if you can't do it, somebody else will and that's okay. Know your limits. I am a developer. I can't design my way out of a wet paper bag. I am not very good with marketing. I know these limits, so I don't try. I hire other people to do them or I tell the clients to hire other people to do them. I know my limits. I'm not going to try and sell something that I can't deliver. A uh, project isn't the time to experiment. If I want to try out a new framework, the middle of a project is not the time to try it out. Learn on my own time, learn in the downtime, sell what you know. Uh, outsourcing is not a dirty word. Surprise, surprise. If it was, you wouldn't be getting hired because you are outsourcing. Don't be afraid to subcontract out work that you can't do, even if it's just, I could do it, but I don't want to, or I could do it, but I just don't have the time. Subcontract it out. Freelancing, it's hard to forget, uh, hard to remember that there is a community of freelancers out there and they all help each other out. Um, it can feel very lonely a lot of the time when you're freelancing, it feels like it's you against the world. There are other freelancers out there. They can do things that you can't. Contact them, hire them, hand them work. They might hand you work when you're in a slow period. It's 
it's really just a case of don't be afraid to hand off work that you're not capable or willing to do. Uh, final truth, and this is the hardest one for most people to grasp. Your project is more important to you than it is to your client. Your client is running a business for, mo for the most part. They might be selling widgets. They might be feeding cheese to cats. I don't know what. Uh, it's whatever their business is, they are focused 100% on that. That is their job. Their job is whatever their business is. Your job is making a website or doing marketing or taking nice photos. Whatever it is, your job is not their job. And it may be stuff that you're doing for their business, but it's still not their job, it's yours. Uh, be proactive about keeping, uh, keeping projects moving. A uh, client will very happily drop off the face of the earth and then six months later ask you for it. The worst example I've had of this was I finished a project for a client, three years later they asked me to release it. <laughs> I had to tell them everything has changed, it'll take another 40, 50 hours to upgrade everything to where it should be now. And they were okay with that, but I wasn't pushing them, so they forgot about it. They didn't care. It wasn't core to their business. But it was core to mine, and I'm really glad that they paid the invoice <laughs> when I sent it. Um, your job as a freelancer includes managing the client. Clients are not there to manage projects. You are there to manage a project. You are there to manage the resources of a project, which is not just yourself, but the client. You might need photos from a client, you might need copy, you might need access to things, this, that and the other, you might need them to sign up for things, you might just need their approval. It is your job to get it from them, it is not their job to hand it to you on a silver platter. Um, makes it a bit painful at times, some clients are aware that they're the slow point and that's okay, but if they're getting frustrated at you because things aren't happening and it's because they're not giving you stuff, then it's you who aren't doing the job properly. The only time, the only time that a client cares more about the project than you is when it's costing them money. If their site goes down, it's an emergency, that's when they care more than you do. You want to go back to sleep but it's three in the morning and they're worried. Uh, if things have gone completely south, that's when they care. They don't care when everything's humming along. They don't care when they're still able to make sales. They care when things are costing them money. And that is the only time when a client cares more than you. And that, I think, is it. Uh, questions, comments, <laughs> praise, abuse, anything? <laughs> yep. How do you know how much you're worth? Uh, it's, I, I think the easiest and the most frustrating answer to that is when people stop paying you, then you're not worth what you're charging. Um, <laughs> it's, a, as I said in an earlier slide, start with about your base salary, figure out what you're getting paid per hour on a salary, uh, times it by about three, have a look, see if you can cover bills. Um, what I've, I've had the experience a few times of having to up my rate just because uh, living situations, uh, uh, circumstances have changed or maybe I'm more skilled than I used to be. And much to my surprise, every time I've sent out that email, dreading all the clients going, oh, you're too expensive. Uh, we're going to drop you and hire someone from uh, Upwork. Um, every single time I've had the clients come back, well, the ones who respond have come back and said, oh, good work, good to know, you're worth more. Um, it's a really good feeling. It's a really horrible feeling sending the email out, but it's a really good feeling <laughs> when you get told that you are actually worth what you're paying. Effectively, if you're not getting work, then you're not worth what you're charging. Um, and that can go the other way as well. If you're charging 10 bucks an hour, 
then you're not getting work because people expect higher quality. Um, people expect to pay more, if, if that makes more sense. It's, but yeah, it, it's one of those things. You need to figure it out based on kind of, kind of what the market rate is. You're still competing with employees. Try not to compete with the um, bargain basement developers that you'll find on Upwork and Odesk or freelance, especially freelancer.com. Don't be put off by those bids that are way, way, way below anything that you could possibly live on. Um, it really is true in freelancing. You get what you pay for. So if you are if you are trying to compete with those people, you are try you are obviously trying to compete on the same quality as they're providing. Um, yeah. Steph, um, when you are setting up the website for someone from scratch, yep. what is the average time that you need to make it happen? Average time? Uh, it really depends on a whole bunch of factors. Uh, for a basic WordPress site, um, personally my rates I start with about 10 hours and that's setting up WordPress but it's also training the client how to use it and that's what a lot of people don't do. They don't sit down with the client and say here's how you change content, here's how. Um, the actual time spent setting up the site might be an hour, especially with WordPress, everything makes things so easy. but there's, there's anywhere from, it, it takes 10 hours and most of that's client training and just getting information from them to if I'm building something custom, I might be doing 30, 40, 50 hours. If I'm not working in WordPress anywhere, I, I've had projects which have, I've got one client where I've been working for them for six years at almost full-time hours and they just, they just keep paying my invoices. I keep chugging along. Um, and they hire about eight developers, <laughs> myself included. So it's pretty easy to like, have a website up in a week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for, for a small business, up in a week, so long as you can get the information from them, and that's the hard part, managing the client, if you can get the information from them up in a week is absolutely no issue. Yeah? What do you, do you give people quotes? What do you do if there's a request for a quote? Um, it depends on the type of work for WordPress. I've, it's almost so normalized now that I've got a site, uh, I've got a page on my site where I say this level of support comes at this price and goes up from there. Um, for other, for other projects, I have trained at university as a project manager and software architect, so I will provide them with nice 20 page long quotes which describe everything that I'm going to do for a larger project, but it, it really depends on you, depends on the client. Um, once again, it helps to be upfront with them, let them know what kind of prices to expect. Also ask them what their budget is, uh, because you might have to change what you're going to do based on their budget. But yeah, it's quote, quotes aren't a big deal. Yep. Yeah. Um, if you've given a quote, negotiated the deal, you start to go, and then you realise it's a bad project, how do you go about pulling out or addressing the red flags that have popped up? Um, it's rare for me to get to the point where a contract's signed without noticing the red flags, but that's experience and there's no good or clean answer to that. However, the best thing I can say is go find a solicitor who you like, can get along with, especially one that knows software, and get them to write your standard contract. Make sure it is legal in Queensland and make sure that every clause is enforceable. Um, that's what I did. It cost me about $1,600 and it is absolutely the best investment that I've ever made. Um, and the biggest red flag is you hand a client a contract and they say, ah, oh, can we just do this without one? <laughs> um, contracts, even if you're not really going to enforce them, 
they are a psychological barrier which most clients won't try to breach. Yep. But they're very closely related. So number one, how did you sort of get yourself out there in the first, and starting off, you know, getting your first few clients and doing that? And number two, do you think it's feasible to start off um, part-time, like having a nine-to-five gig and doing this on the side? Our first couple of clients were from, it was fee worker before it turned into freelancer and Odesk before it turned into Upwork and they are the worst gigs I've ever had. <laughs> um, uh, other than that, there's, I've found clients through coming to meetups and talking to people, getting, getting to know people, let people know what you can do. Uh, I've had clients come from my old employer. So they, they still, uh, last week he sent, my old boss sent me through a contract for something else. Um, and honestly, the majority of my clients have come through word of mouth. And that's not very helpful when you're starting out, but it's, it's honestly where it is. I haven't had to go chasing clients for quite a few years. Um, and what, what was the second question? Sorry. Well, just, do you think it's feasible to start off building yeah. it up? Yes, yeah, for, for sure. Um, and that's probably the best way. If you don't have three months of living expenses saved up, or aren't willing to go and live in a van and uh, take showers in <laughs> in strange uh, caravan parks, then yeah, the, the best way to start is working a nine to five and just doing bits and pieces as you can. Uh, try not to burn yourself out. That will be really easy to do and really hard to recover from and it will affect everything in your life. But it is feasible to do that and probably a good way to start for most people. Uh, yep. This is related to an earlier question. Just wondering if you could talk to us about uh, whether you tend to quote based on a fixed bid or time of materials. And uh, where you find clients tend to prefer. It, once again, it really depends on the project. For WordPress stuff, for the most part, it's consistent just because of the platform is consistent enough that I can give a fixed quote and say, it'll be this. Uh, for projects which are less defined, um, I will either try to get that information out of them and, and give them a detailed fixed quote, uh, but there's always gonna be ad hoc, ad hoc work where I say, look, it's just gonna cost you this per hour. Um, I'm gonna send you invoices at every two weeks or every 40 hours, uh, pay them and I'll keep working on it. Um, there's, there's no hard and fast rule there. Estimating, the best advice I've ever had about estimating is estimate what you think it will take, double it, add another 50% as a buffer, and you're about halfway finished. <laughs> um, estimating is really hard until you've done it so many times and there's so many things. You always forget something. Uh, a client will never be unhappy with the projects coming in under budget and under time. Um, so estimate high and you'll probably still go a bit over, but it's all right. <laughs> uh, anything else? Yep. Just a comment on that as well. Like, don't just, um, don't just quote on the hours, on the minutes it actually takes you. Yep. Consider the value to the client too. Yes, exactly. Because if it takes you 10 minutes, but they're going to get $20,000 value out of it, it's more yep. value to them than your 10 minutes. To charge them. So yeah, always uh, the, there's the many ways to approach billing, uh, and yeah, that's definitely one bill on value. I was talking to someone a few weeks ago who sells WordPress sites for about thirty thousand dollars, and the client has no access, and they are just really good at marketing. And that's what they sell. They walk up to a client with a bad website or something else and they go, do you want to be top frank on Google? Oh, what was it they were doing? Uh, sending letters to clients with ads in yellow pages saying, are, are you happy wasting all your money on yellow pages? Um, for the same spend, you could be pulling a lot more stuff. And for that, it's worth $30,000 for that client. 
but they're still getting a WordPress site, which I would have probably charged two or $3,000 to make. But the clients are happy to pay that because they're also getting all the marketing and the SEO and everything else along with it. Um, what's that? <laughs> uh, it's in the yellow pages under anything with a full page. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, anything else? All right, well, uh, thanks for listening to me. Um, I hope this talk gets put up somewhere. Yeah. Um, some helpful links, some rate calculators, a uh, few support communities. I don't know where there's no freelancer meetup in Brisbane anymore. Uh, I use Tadoovu for task and time tracking. It is free for freelancers. Um, and it's a great little system and I do all my billing through that. And there's me. Um, this whole talk was a post on the freelance subreddit. I think it's still the top rated post of all time on that subreddit. Uh, it turned into a blog which got shared around and then a whole bunch of people asked me to make a talk. So I did and you poor suckers got it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, thank you very much.